This video is on percent composition. Make sure you're taking good notes while you watch this and you're really listening to what's being said in addition to what's being written down. Uh, you will need out your periodic table along with your calculator for this. So percent composition is by definition the percent by mass of each element in a compound. You've done percents in mass and it's the same idea. So we're just going to look at the mass for the percent. So what we want to know is how much of each element is in a compound. Okay, so by mass we're looking at the percent of each one. Um, to do this, we need to understand what a percent is just in general first. So you could think of a percent as how much of the total. So I like to think of it as the part. So whatever you have divided by the whole, like the total. Okay, now that would give you a fraction, like a decimal, like less than one. Um, so to get a percent, what we do is we take that fraction and we multiply it by 100. So now we're just dealing with bigger numbers that are easier to work with. You do this all the time when you get results on like a test or a quiz or an assignment and you want to find your letter grade. Last time we based our letter grades off of a percentage that you got correct. So let's say for instance that you got 27 out of 30 at an assignment. Okay, so we want to find our percent. So we're going to divide those and then multiply by 100. When you divide 27 by 30, you get 0.9. You multiply by 100, you get 90%. So that tells you then your grade. You got 27 out of 30. So 27 was the part you got, 30 was the whole, and you got 90% of the questions correct. So in most classes, that would be an A or an A minus. So good job. Um, what we're talking about in this case is the percent composition. So we want to know the percent of the masses. Okay, so our percent composition is going to be the mass of each individual element. Okay, so that's your part, right? Just one element in the compound. And you're going to divide it by the whole, which would be the total mass of the compound. So again, that's going to give you your fraction, just like above. So we have to multiply by 100 to get that percent. Okay, so there are steps to help you work through this. Okay, there's three basic steps. So the first step is we have to find the mass of each element. That's the top part of our kind of equation, you could think. You have to first find that. Okay, that's where your periodic table is going to come in handy. You're looking up the atomic masses. Um, once you have those, you need to find the total mass. So you need to be able to find your number that's going to go in the denominator. So you add them up, you get your total mass, then you're going to use your equation. So you're going to plug each of those into your equation. So you're actually going to have, your answer is going to have the number of parts that you have, uh, number of elements. So if you have something like H2O, you're going to have a percent for hydrogen, H, and you're going to have a percent for oxygen, O. Okay. Um, so let's do two examples of this. So the first one says, find the percent composition of C3H8. So we're going to have two different percents, a percent of carbon and a percent of hydrogen. It helps to be really organized when you write out these problems. So I'll show you how I do it. I list my elements first. So I have carbon and I have hydrogen, and I'm going to leave a little bit of space in between them. And now I want to say how many I have of each, because if I want to find the mass of carbon, so the mass of each element, step number one, I have to take into account that there are three of them. So there are three carbons, and each one has a mass of 12.01. Now, do you know where I got the 12.01? That's the atomic mass on your periodic table. So look it up if you don't believe me. Okay. So 3 times 12.01 is going to give me 36.03 grams. Right? 12.01 is the number of grams. So that's the mass of all the carbon in this molecule. Let's do the same for hydrogen. There are eight hydrogens. Each one has a mass of 1.01. .01. Remember these atomic masses? This 1.01, 12.01, we always round them to the hundredths place, the so two numbers after the decimal. So when you multiply this, you get 8.08 .08 grams of hydrogen. All right, so we've just done step number one. Now we've got to find the total. So we're going to take these two numbers, 
and we're going to add them up. So I'm just going to show this work down here like this. You could just do this in your calculator as well. So 36.03 plus 8.08 would give you 44.11 grams. That's the total. So now I got to step three. Plug each mass into the equation. So I don't rewrite my numbers. I keep going across my page. So 36.03, I need to divide that by 44.11 grams. Now what happens to the gram units? They cancel. They divide out. Grams divided by grams. We want to find a percent, so we're going to take that answer and multiply by 100. So I do 36.03 divided by 44.11, and I get 0.8168, so on, so I'm going to multiply by 100. So sig digs, I want to use 4 in this case, because 4 is my smallest amount. They're all 4 for this first number, or first um, problem, part of it, I should say. Um, we don't look at the 3 or the 8 for sig digs because they're exact. It's like 3.00000 and so on. Okay, so I'm going to use 4, so 81.68%. So we write the number, we write percent, that's kind of our unit because grams cancel out. And we have to have one more thing, we have to label what it is. This is carbon. Alright, so now let's do the same thing for the hydrogen. So I'm going to do 8.08 .08 divided by 44.11 grams, grams divide out, times 100. So, let's see, 8.08 .08 divided by 44.11, so I get 0.18317 and so on, so multiply by 100, 18.31784 and so on. Um, I really should only have three sig digs, so 18.3. Or it's 18.32 if we kept 4 percent hydrogen. And I'm not going to be a real picky about sig digs in these. Um, so your answer really is all of this. Both percents. Um, a way to check your answer. This is a good thing to know. So check answer. They should add up to what? 100%. Or be very close. Very close, meaning they might not be quite exact because of rounding or sig digs. Okay? So does this add up to very close to 100? Well, 81.68 plus 18.3 gives me 99.98. Yeah, and if I had carried out more uh, decimal places, it would have been even closer. So let's try another one. And this one, if you want, you can pause it right now and try it yourself and then see if you get the right answer or if you're still feeling like you want more guidance, then follow along with me. So I'm going to list out my elements. So I have calcium, I have nitrogen, and I have oxygen. Okay, and then I'm going to list how many I have. So calcium, there's only one calcium. So times its mass, 40.08 grams. So all of the calcium is 40.08. Okay, so nitrogen. Well, there's a two subscript outside of the parentheses. That applies to everything inside, and it multiplies. So I have one nitrogen inside times two outside. So I have two nitrogens total times 14.01. That's the mass of one nitrogen. So my total mass is 28.02. Um, the oxygen, so I have three oxygens in nitrate, I have two sets of three, so two times three is six, or you can think of three plus three. So I have six oxygens, um, each oxygen is 16.00, keep forgetting those G's, because they cancel out, um, and you get 96.00. Okay, so now we need to find our total mass. So... And like I said, you could just do this adding up in your calculator. I'm going to write it down, though, so we can see it. So 40.08 plus 28.02 plus 96 is 164.10. And you do want to be writing those zeros at the end because they are significant digits in these cases, and they will affect your answer at the end. So we've just done step two. Step three, now we want to find the part of each one and divide by the whole to get the percent. So each one, I'm going to write them all out before I... Um, type them in, 164.10 grams times 100, 
right? Each one's the same. So divided by 164.10 grams times 100. Okay. I like to write it all out and then I go and do it all in the calculator after that. So 40.08 divided by 164.10 times 100. I'm going to have four sig digs. Uh, would be 24.42%. So remember, you have the percent sign and you have your substance listed. This is how much calcium there is. Um, nitrogen. So 28.02 divided by 164.10 times 100. I get 17.07%. So even though there's more nitrogen than there is calcium, um, the percent of calcium is higher because calcium weighs more. Right? And then oxygen, I have mostly more oxygens than anything else. Um, so when I do this calculation, I get 58.50%. So that's why that's the highest percent. Over A little bit over half of my molecule is oxygen. So in terms of your answer, it's all three of these percents. So that's how to calculate percent composition. Uh, be sure to ask questions if you have them.